Welcome to All Things Internet, a show where we talk about things we see on the internet that usually have to do with the internet, and we... No, I don't. Emily tries her gosh darnest to fact check and research whatever she thinks I might find relevant. I am one of your hosts, Rachel Ballinger. I'm Emily Brostaff. And dog of the day is Dilly Daisy. Dilly Willy. Dilly Willy. Um, how's everyone doing this week? Fine. I have another co- I have a, I have a co-host this time. You guys don't have to listen to me ramble for 30 minutes. So... That's good for you. Congratulations. Everyone liked it. Uh, okay. Well, good. I'm glad. They were very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being nice. All right. Em is here. What do you got for us today, Em? Um, uh, my mic. Yes. I also have a microphone. Um, they are always in front of us. <laughs> being annoying. Okay. There we go. I feel like that's better. Look at my vault, my levels. Oh, my God. I feel like this is how I normally talk, too. I feel like I'd be shouting if I talked any louder. Um, I'm shouting right now. I yeah. could talk like this, too, and then my volume would definitely be down. But I'm okay. performing. And when you performing. perform, you have to have energy. You project to the back of the room, says my theater teacher in high school. What was your go-to <laughs> monologue in drama club? I didn't have one. Oh. I hated, hated having to find a monologue. Oh. I thought they were the dumb. I was like, can I just go up there and do stand-up? Like, I didn't want to <laughs> memorize. I hate memorizing things. Yeah. Like, I can talk in front of a camera all day long, as we know, but the second you give me a script, I shut down. I can't do it. Yeah. So, I couldn't, do, I, I don't know why, I, I know why I was in theater. It's because my siblings were, but that was not my jam. No. Well, all right. All right. Um, but you will not catch me doing improv. Let me tell you that much. Nope. Um, well, elephant in the room. Sorry I missed last week. Uh, if you saw on Instagram, Dilly Willie is a little sick dying <laughs> dilly has been dying here i'll take this one you think about butterflies uh emily's dog uh, daisy she's 10 years old she was diagnosed with cancer she doesn't have that much longer with us which is why she will be dog of the day <laughs> for the for, 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 for future. future because she has to come to work every day now um but yeah so last week was emily finding all this out and so we're just gonna enjoy our last weeks or months with dilly years and we're manifesting years decades our last few she's, decades i'm Daisy. sorry but she's 10 so she's gonna be the miracle dog that makes it to what 35. is the oldest dog 29 i'm not being insensitive i'm distracting him from crying <laughs> so <laughs> we have a podcast to do gosh darn it i can't do it by myself again um 29 is it like a chihuahua right it's some little mutt from yeah. like italy or something yeah and- big dogs have shorter it's usually about 12 for big big dogs i thought it was like 15 my family didn't take care of the dogs really well how old is poopy she's i think she's 11 okay and she's thriving she yeah well she's lumpy have you seen all the lumps on her body but she's thriving she is a kangaroo she jumps a lot i love that dog we're talking about my mom's yellow lab um yeah i mean i think our rottweiler lived 12 that's long for a Rottweiler. She was great. I made that up. I have no idea when she died. <laughs> <laughs> she was like seven and a half. She seemed old to me. I don't know. Uh, uh, I yeah. just always in my head. I was like, big dogs, 10 to 12 was my, has always been my okay. thought process. And then little dogs, I'm like 16. Yeah. I think our little dog was like 16, but she also had, what's that? Uh, kidney disease where you eat too much fat. No. I had pancreatitis. Pa- oh. Pancreas is not kidney. So she died a little early, and she had no teeth. God, little dogs never have teeth. God rest her soul. <laughs> yeah, I was just it, uh, Abby's parents' dog has no teeth. Yeah, what is it with little dogs and no teeth? It, they have like they just have to get them pulled. They have like gin, gin, gingivitis, <laughs> gum divitis, gum divitis. <laughs> I don't know. They're all rot. Uh, because I think they can't like eat good things. She's missing a tooth, but that's because she picked up a log and decided to eat it. So well, I mean, it was a good decision at the time. Yeah, high in fiber. So. There you go. Yep. All anyway. right. So that's the dis- depressing news in yep. this household. <laughs> Let's get on to internet news. Don't you dare talk about the Met Gala. And that's our show, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. There was so much good stuff that happened. They're all just cats. Yeah. I will never understand. Is it a charity? And no, it's a fundraiser for the met met right it's called the met the museum okay so it is a good thing but wasn't the theme a really bad man 
Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll let you tell us the news instead of me just randomly spewing. No, I like this. Poop from my butt. You're you're like getting me twenty percent there, and I'm just wrapping it up. Um, I oh. lost my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I need it right now, but I, I thought you were grabbing Daisy's tail for like emotional support or something. <laughs> we got this together, Del. I wouldn't rattle it too hard because she did just have explosive diarrhea in your backyard. <gasps> same not in the backyard in my bathroom though i mean you you could i mean i just started my period i don't want to put blood in the yard Mm, true yeah um all right so yes the met gala happened this week and the theme was called in honor of carl (laughs) and i'm snapchatting and then she saw i wasn't oh you weren't you're just supposed to keep oh candid it's a promo oh sorry so the theme for the met gala this week i'm just gonna be really awkward now (laughs) Is uh, it was called in honor of Carl, and this was referring to the German fashion designer Carl Lagerfeld, who, just as a reminder, as you mentioned, is a trash of a trash person. Yeah, didn't he hate the color pink? He hated the color pink. Yeah, so he basically like and we, Zara would be very angry. They at would him. not get along. No. Um, we talked about this a little bit when the theme was announced a few months ago. Um, that like he should like he should not be the theme. I don't know. He's a bad person. I don't care how much he quote unquote contributed to the fashion world. He should not have been the theme. He should not have been honored at all. So his entire career, he consistently made comments that were anti-fat, anti-Islamic and comments that were always critical of women's bodies. And he also made fun of the Me Too movement. He sent flowers to an accused male um, and he defended a stylist who was accused of S.A. And he was also known for dressing a model in both yellow face and black face. So he's literal garbage. A trash person. Yes. And Is she, he dead? Yes. Yes. Um, and she, Karma. <laughs> was I going to make the comment and then filtered? Yeah. <laughs> um, but alas, he was the theme for this year. But several of the celebrities obviously recognized that he was a trash person. But like. I want to say you sign contracts with fashion designers because like the tickets to get if you're not basically how it works is like when the Met Gala, they know it's happening every year, whatever. When the date is announced and the theme is announced, these fashion designers immediately start creating these pieces for celebrities to wear. Yeah. And a lot of times they'll pick a very specific celebrity that they want to wear their piece. Don't know why they just do. Um, and so what these fashion designers will do is they'll reach out, like, let's say they reach out to Dula Peep and they'll say, hey, we're like Versace, like we're, we're, we're creating this dress. We want you to wear it to the Met Gala. They cover her ticket price. If you don't have a designer that reaches specifically out to you and asks you to wear one of their pieces from their collection, it's anywhere, depending on where you're sitting and who you're sitting with, it's anywhere from $34,000. Holy, how much? Money does the Met need? Right. To $54,000. And uh, the average price this year was about $50,000 per ticket. And that's just to get in the door. So like if you want to sit at like a high end table or like you have any specific uh, specifications for the night for like your food or like, I don't know, something. And that's not including. Who dresses you? Right. And I'm saying that's not including like if you have to reach out to a designer yourself and say, hey, I need a dress for the Met, then you're also paying for that design. So it's like, wow, this yeah. seems dumb. Yeah. And like, I get it. Like, I'm all for the arts and like supporting arts and stuff. And at the same time, I'm like, how many freaking homeless people could that feed for the year? I'm not going to look at it like that because anything you do, like you raise money for childhood cancer and the people with diabetes are like, why aren't you raising <laughs> money for diabetes? Like there is, I yes, there is a lot of that. I don't even think this is about fundraising anymore. I think this is literally just famous people showing off stuff like no one there actually cares that it's a fundraiser no it's a definitely like a who's who situation yeah it has nothing to do like the Met doesn't need that much money no and especially because a lot of the celebrities when the announcement was made of what the theme was they were like oh we're definitely like boycotting and not like even the kardashians said they might not go because they recognize like how yeah, but awful, they still did but they still went so that's what yeah. i'm saying it's like you it's a trade-off like do you stand by your morals and don't go because you recognize like how toxic i mean money aside you recognize how toxic this theme is or do you and like do you not go and you miss out on the publicity and yeah. like you're you're pissing off and you get to rub elbows with other famous people exactly and like if the designers reach out to you and you deny them then like are you cutting that tie there like i'm not saying i feel sorry for them or it was a tough decision like i think if i were in their shoes i wouldn't have gone just 
do to the theme. But like I I do get like it's a who's who situation. How did this start? How how did the Met figure this uh, out? Right, exactly. How who started this? Because they're a genius. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like I, how they're like, how do we raise money? Um, how much money do we need? Uh like a billion dollars. All right. <laughs> Let's invite a bunch of celebrities to wear a bunch of fashion designers and serve yeah, them really and like, crappy have, food. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna have really weird themes right I mean, people love a theme party oh yeah i liked camp i love that theme yeah i thought that was a really cool theme yeah but this one a swing and a miss um so obviously a, a bunch of the celebrities who attended oh that, that's where i was going with this like i don't know how it works i don't think they'll ever come forward and say unless someone like lizzo or like who's a like really woke woke celebrity that's always like spilling the tea when they shouldn't oh i feel like there's like a few of those like especially the new gen z ones coming up like i feel like um, not Phoebe Bridgers. What is the other girl? She shaved her head for the mat. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I saw her face. Yeah. Um, Florence Pugh. Mm. She's always like sharing stuff that like she definitely shouldn't and could get her in trouble. So I'm just waiting for them to come forward and like tell us like how this actually works. But I'm assuming, so this is allegedly, I'm assuming when the met, the date is announced, designers immediately start making contracts with celebrities because they're trying to snatch them up as fast yeah. as they can. And so it's like, I'm guessing because I can't I mean, you know, just how I feel about Lizzo, but like I can't imagine Lizzo knew the theme and then was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll still go. So I'm assuming she was under contract to go. Yeah. I mean, some people also just don't care. Yeah. When you yeah. When you get that much exposure or like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But there was a couple celebrities who attended that whether they wanted to be there or not, uh, they came up with their own subtle way of basically like sticking the middle finger to the whole thing and like uh -huh. Carl. Um, so they shaded him through their outfit choices. So like you mentioned, it was very widely known that uh, Lagerfeld despised the color pink. He wouldn't let his models wear it. He would never incorporate it into his collections. So when several celebrities showed up wearing bright pink to the red carpet, a ton of news outlets were assuming they did this as like a diss. Yeah. So these people included Viola Davis, who's, who was in a giant hot like it could not have been more pink hot yes pink, i like, saw that oh she looked amazing um Quana rose chasing horse pots who's a native american model um also i know i know what we're always asking this tell us in the comments nicely is it native american or do we use in indigenous uh, it's always back and forth and i saw a couple articles saying native american model and a couple articles saying indigenous and so if i chose the wrong term sorry um and then there, can there just be a constant list on the internet of like this is the this, this is, is what the we're using now. now this is what it is now right i would like that like update it daily and i'm not Hourly, being sarcastic please. yeah no yeah. i'm saying because i don't want to use the wrong terms ever right but it, it does change often and i'm saying not saying yeah. it's a negative thing is it because we're constantly growing and evolving yeah but I just, I never want to get in trouble for using the wrong yes. one. Well, I never want to, in, in, like, insult anybody. So, I, I yeah. I, yeah. If it was just a constant list. Right. So, if we ever say anything and it's, like, out of date, like, just tell us nicely in the comments. And yes. I, I do read it and I'm like, oh, okay. And then I yes. use that going forward. Um, Ashley Graham, Sydney Sweeney, Naomi Campbell, Gwendolyn Christie, and Jennifer Lopez all incorporated or just straight out wore pink outfits, which was Good. great. Um, also, someone tweeted out a picture of Lizzo in the kitchen of the Met holding a basket of McDonald's fries and said, this is like what the tweet said, Carl Lagerfeld hates, hated fatness. So for hashtag Met Gala theme of this year, Lizzo dressed her glorious fat self in a classic silhouette in the classic black that he loved, dripping in pearls, which he loved, and took a picture of her fine butt eating fries in the kitchen. I thought it was, it was pretty epic. I love that. Yeah. Um, and then. She looked good. Oh, she looked in all of these people. Like, I, yeah. I don't think I saw one outfit where I was like, ooh, what are you doing? I feel like yeah. every year I see an outfit where I'm like, I clearly don't understand the art that you're trying to communicate. Yes. But this year I did it. There was a couple of people that dressed really plain. And I was like, oh, come on. Like, yeah, you that know? always happens. There's always people that I'm like, you didn't, you just, OK, that's you just fine. showed up in a tux. Like, yeah. you know, give a little effort. But, you know, um, and also Pedro Pascal from what's, yeah. what's that show? Um, the Last of Us. The Last of Us. Yeah. He also came to make a statement. So Lagerfeld was known. He made sure everyone was aware of the fact that he didn't like men's long socks and men's leg hair. It's a little strange. 
Um, so Pat- I mean, I saw his outfit, so I understand. But I was like, was that why he did it? That's why he did it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, someone wrote they they posted. Oh, Daisy's getting comfy. Oh, her nose is cold. Um, so someone posted his full outfit on Twitter, and also he put on his middle finger the symbol for Valentino, who's who dressed him. Mm. So he, I want to say again, allegedly, this is me assuming he's making like a fu statement to like big giant um fashion designers but he chose to be that's dressed what I'm saying. by a fashion designer i'm gonna say yeah. that was a stretch you think why on just the middle finger though maybe they that's literally the only one it fit on or something <laughs> sometimes my rings are my ring choices no based no on- no it was nail polish like oh. on his on- maybe they just thought it was f- high Funny? fashion he's not if he got asked by a designer and he said yes or he asked a designer to dress him he's not gonna say f you to the designer yeah, maybe it's like an F you to like me having to do this in the first place. But he didn't have to do anything. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Like maybe they're contracted. Maybe before they know that the theme is announced, they're contracted to but go to But why would things. he say F you to a designer? Why would he say yes to a designer even before knowing the, like the theme? Because normally the theme is not controversial like this. In I my know, opinion. but why would he be saying F to the designer? Uh-huh. For the designer not knowing what the theme was? I just don't think he's saying F you to the designer who dressed him. Okay. I really don't. Because that. Yeah. Why would he agree to work? Why would he agree to be with a designer if he didn't like the designer? Because it's not an F you to the designer. It's an F you to the whole show. Because I'm saying maybe he got contracted by this designer before he knew the theme of the show. But now he's contracted and he has to go. I don't think he should be mad at the designer for that. I don't think so either. That's why I'm saying I don't think yeah. it's an F you to the designer. I think we're reading too much into this. Reading too much? Yes. Well, someone did post and they said, so they posted the the middle finger with the Valentino symbol on it and like his whole outfit with his little slutty knee popping out. And they said, okay, this man wore high socks, a thing that Carl hated to Carl's night. Bright red Valentino outfit with shorts and boops popped his slutty little knee off. Middle fingers up twice with the Valentino logo, rejected interviewers, and absolutely served. He's my B word. So, and like, he, yeah, and he wouldn't do interviews. So that's what I'm saying. It, it was very much like he was forced to be there because he wouldn't stop mm. and talk to anyone. He, re- he took a couple pictures, but like moved it along pretty so, quickly. Oh, okay. So he hates leg, men's leg hair and long socks, but that's what he was showing off? Yeah, that's what he chose to I wear. Thought, oh, I thought you were saying like, he hated those things, so he shaved his legs and wore short socks. That's what I thought you were saying. Oh, I was oh. like, why would he be mad? I was so confused by you. No, because Carl, the, the whole honor, the honor of Carl, the bad guy, he's the one that's always said, I hate men's long socks and I hate leg hair. I thought you were saying, Pesca- whatever his name is, hated that thing. Those oh, things. No, uh-uh. And I was like, what a random statement. <laughs> What a uh, random thing for this man to pop off, I guess. I I missed something. That's in this okay. whole thing. <laughs> okay. So this was a, his, I'm caught up now. Yeah, his whole outfit was a giant shade to Carl. But I oh. but I do agree. If the designer agreed to design this for him in honor to shade, like in in order to shade Carl, then why are you mad at the designer with the middle fingers? Or maybe he's saying me and Valentino are giving you the med- yeah, middle finger. Yeah, I don't think finger. he's mad at his designer because his designer okay. said F you to Carl as well. Okay, so that's the conclusion we're going to. Yes. They're both together yes. and saying F you to Carl. Yes. Okay, I like that. Um, and then there were also plenty of awkward moments with any award show. Mm-hmm. So to start, there was it's a- not co- an award show. Does anyone win oh, this? Sorry. What do they do there? They win for being rich. They, I literally, okay, there was a whole article that came out that was like, what actually happens at the Met Gala? Because I was- confused and all i know of it is what i saw in oceans eight or oceans nine whatever the one sandra bullock was in where she robs the oh. Met. that's one oh. of my it's such a good movie yeah only because i have a crush on like five of the leading women um but they take the pictures on the red carpet then they go in they get to view the sometimes they'll have like a very special um ex- exhibit at the museum that just the celebrities that go get to view okay. and then it'll be open up to the public later so they get to view the exhibits they have champagne they mingle whatever then they sit down for a dinner there's usually a performer lizzo was the surprise performer this year and then afterwards there's a giant after party where they all change and just go and be. so it's just a dinner it's just a dinner and a performance sometimes all right for fifty four thousand dollars which again to a lot of these people is just like 
pennies yeah but it yeah so anyway um so yeah there was a cockroach who crashed the red carpet and chased after a photographer who ended up taking photos of it and then when the cockroach died because someone stepped on it by ax by accident yeah yeah in quotes Variety hopped on Twitter to let everyone know by posting a picture of the roach with the dates like 2023 to 2023. Like it's a yeah, memorial. I saw that. That was pretty funny. So, so freaking funny. Um, and they said it's with our deepest sadness that we must report the Met Gala cockroach was stepped on RIP. Um, yeah. Then Jared Leto, Doja Cat and Little Nas X all came dressed as cats in one way or another to pay tribute to Carl's deceased cat, Shoopit. Um why yeah i was wondering what the cat thing was because they don't want to pay honor to carl so they're like if we have to come and we have to dress in theme we're honoring his cat who's not a terrible person instead of carl himself so it's also like a big f you to carl got it got it yeah got it. so doja came dressed with face prosthetics on and then when emma chamberlain was doing the red carpet interview with her doja only answered in meows <laughs> so it, <laughs> it was literally so hilarious to watch but also i felt so bad for emma because she was out there fighting for her life yeah. with that microphone trying her best so she was like so what ha what's the inspiration behind behind your outfit today and dojo was like meow 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 <laughs> i hate it i love it yeah and like emma really was trying her best um it went on for like a solid two minutes oh uh, girl oh yes Emma, I'm telling you, when Emma was fighting for her life, she was fighting for her life. I would have been like, okay, thank you. That's have kinda, a great one. That's like, how she wrapped it up. After two questions and realizing I'm only getting meows, right. I end the interview. Right. So, and then um, Doja also got in like, I don't want to say trouble, but like people were making fun of her online a little later in the night because she was seen very blatantly. She was not trying to hide it at all, puffing in her cat prosthetics behind people that were being like live interviewed for the rest of the night. <laughs> we just saw her in the background with her little jewel. Um, and then Lil Nas X also came dressed as what I can only, did you see his outfit? It was sparkles. Oh my. A disco ball? He was a sparkly rhinestone cat. So from literally the tippy top of his head down to his little pinky toe, he was covered in glitter and rhinestones. He had uh, glitter whiskers, glitter fangs, and glitter claws. And then he too was meowing at interviewers. How did everyone decide? Like, the designers all had to talk to each other. Like, let's do the cat thing. There's no way that all of these designers independently decided to do I, the cat stuff. I'm assuming this is uh, one of the situations where they reached out to designers because little Oz ne little Nas X was not in a design he was in a speedo and then covered in glitter and then Doja Cat was like in basically like a onesie and with the prosthetics so, so do you think they all talk to each other maybe or like I don't know there were lots of memes online making fun of them being like when you turn around and see someone else like one of us is gonna have to change like, yeah memes. like I just don't understand how they all decided to do the cat theme because his like uh what what's his stupid name carl's cat was so iconic and so like tied to him that it's not like it was just a random pet where they were like oh he must have had a pet let's honor the pet instead like he brought this cat everywhere with him so it was very iconic so i think if you were gonna honor him i get how they all got there the three of them but i really don't think they worked with designers i think they worked with their own people for this stuff all right yeah and then um and then Jared Leto showed up in a full on cat costume, but he was like, he went like sports mascot mode. Yeah. I literally couldn't tell if it was Photoshop because the face looked so weird on right. it. Right. Because it was a replica of, of the cat, of Shupit, the actual okay, cat. Okay. Because it was like weird looking. Like it didn't look like a mascot. It looked like a digital image. It, yeah. Yeah. That's a good way of describing it. And, and it was like a removable head. Like he took the cat head off multiple times throughout the night to like, Breathe. show to breathe to show his makeup underneath like you know whatever but and then he apparently at one point he was like shouting into the crowd he's like i'm Shupet. Like, <laughs> like but these people need to not do drugs before they show up <laughs> uh, and then there was also one celebrity who actually brought her own food into the gala so her name is tiana Gwyneth paltrow uh, she would have brought just one singular aspirin <laughs> And that's it. She, uh, I'm stuffed. A tablespoon of bone broth. Oh, my God. So Tiana Taylor brought in Chick-fil-A to eat instead of what Vogue was serving. So apparently it's well known that the food at the Met is just trash and most celebrities leave hungry. 
So Tiana, Tiana or Tiana, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. $50,000 for what? Oh, what they served this year was split pea soup with truffle snow. I would have brought Chick-fil-A too. Wait, that was the whole meal? I mean, I'm sure it's multiple courses, but like that's what everyone was tweeting out was like this. Line, that sounds really good. Yum. Um, <laughs> I want to try it. I, I would try it. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Tiana decided to take matters into her own hands. And it's unclear whether she sent out an assistant to pick out this pick up this food for her or whether she carried it in herself. But God bless. Way to make a statement. I would have postmated it. Yeah. I mean, I wish she would have chosen like something other than Chick-fil-A because, yeah. you know, they're a bad company. But like pop off. I love it. It's yeah. a vibe. Um, there were also two pregnancy announcements during the Met Gala. So Serena Williams and Alex. Alexis. Oh, Hanian, I'm sorry. Reveal that they're both expecting uh, their second child during the two, 2023 Met Gala. So Serena wrote on her Instagram, she posted a picture of her and her husband because children like aren't al- allowed into the Met. They can like be on the carpet sometimes, but they're not actually allowed into the Met. Oh, okay. I didn't know this. Yeah. So she. I just assume what kid wants to go to there? <laughs> Apparently Northwest does. <laughs> of course. Of course she does. So Serena wrote on her Instagram, she posted a picture of just her and her husband, even though they already have a child, just her and her husband. And she said, was so excited when Anna Wintour invited three of us to the Met Gala, talking about her, her husband, and then obviously like the baby, the baby that now. she's grown. Yeah. And then she confirmed the pregnancy to Vogue's red carpet team. And then Carly Kloss um, also revealed that she's expecting another child with, I don't know if she's married to Joshua Kushner, or if it's just a boyfriend, but she's a retired uh, Victoria's Secret angel. And apparently she's, she had like a, a, and a perfectly sized it was like a very uh, it was showing a lot but i don't okay. i don't want to get in trouble for saying it was a big baby bump it was a perfectly sized baby bump showing on the red carpet which she's been hiding a very visible baby bump there we go which she's been hiding for months and, okay and so she uh told entertainment tonight this is the most important night in fashion of course and i'm honestly surprised i could keep it a secret this long and then showed off her baby bump in this like gorgeous black dress um so yeah and i think the only other thing that i was like weirded out about i don't know if that's the right word with the met is the carpet this year you know how i feel about them replacing the red carpet what yes they, what they do that at i don't remember oscars or something grammy oscar yeah VMAs, i don't know well this year it was a white carpet with red and blue squiggles on it and so oh people are like it's giving toothpaste, toothpaste. yeah <laughs> yes yeah. i saw that i, I like that yeah that and then and then northwest uh showed up with her mom I don't I don't think on the carpet what was like seen walking with her mom out of the hotel wearing a fire fit oh, to, I didn't see that. to the Met, but didn't show up on the carpet or obviously in the Met itself, like in the Met Gala itself. So someone tweeted out a picture of a golden retriever sitting in the passenger seat of a car and the car window has a sign taped on it that says the AC is on. He has water and is listening to his favorite music and said Northwest in the cart right now. <laughs> Just, I love that. Yeah. Uh. All right, that's all for the Met. That's all for the Met. All right, before we move on to other news, let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. Farmer's Dog. Farmer's Dog is our sponsor for today. Whether you have a few week old puppy or a senior who's seen multiple decades, any dog person like me knows the most valuable thing in the world is spending time with your pet. The Farmer's Dog makes it easy to keep them healthy, which can give you more quality years with them. The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy food. It's recommended by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from human-grade ingredients in safe, clean kitchens. It's the best option for your dog at all stages of life because it's not kibble. It's not canned goo. It's real food. Traditional dry and wet dog food options are extremely processed, can use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to, and are extremely difficult to portion accurately. The farmer's dog isn't just higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog and stay at their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. Dogs at healthy weights can live as much as 16% longer than overweight dogs. That's two and a half years. A fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits, from a healthier coat and skin to better breath, even easier digestion and smaller, better poops. A healthy diet isn't just important for humans. 
It's important for our dogs as well. It doesn't matter if your dog is old or young. It's always the right time to be investing in their health, helping you live more healthy, happy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box at thefarmersdog.com slash ATI. That's thefarmersdog.com slash ATI. And we're back. All right. Um, so this happened a little while ago, but for some reason I haven't seen anyone talking about it. And I did want to like, I don't know, bring it up. So first, the she-devil herself, Candace Owens, went for JoJo. We talked about that. Oh, right. She's not a lesbian. Oh, right. JoJo's not a lesbian. I was like, Candace Owens. I was like, I was like no, maybe. They both are lesbians. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not outing anyone or... No, I take retract my statement. Retract. <laughs> JoJo is a lesbian. Yes. Um, And then now she's going for my lord and savior herself, Lizzo, which like... I will not stand for, I mean, I won't stand for her going for JoJo, but you go for Lizzo? Personal vendetta. How, what do you do? What, did she call her fat or something? Of course she did. Um, oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Um, so, oh, <laughs> before. Such a good insult. Oh, my God. That's so Oh, my hurtful. God. Lizzo doesn't even know she's fat. So oh, my she, God. Oh, my God. This is going to be such shocking news. <laughs> um, so, before we hop in, just trigger warning. Obviously, we're going to be talking about body shaming and anti-fat rhetoric. Oh, uh, should I have said that before? <laughs> it's no, really sarcastic. It's, oh, good. So, the Ever Nasty podcast host, Candace Owens, is obviously back on her BS. And this time, she came for our queen. <laughs> political person and we just call her a podcast host she it's like she hosts it is a i i want to call it a talk show but like it's a, it's a podcast it's like an internet show it's like an andrew tate internet show type of thing where you, okay. you can listen to it on is she political that's how it started uh um, and, and she is and like i'm gonna say yes because she is taking like this subject if we're taking this subject for instance she is taking lizzo's fatness and she is turning it into some political rant like she takes everything and turns it into some type of like political rant how is lizzo eating french fries a political okay continue you know um so it all started when someone named gina bontempo tweeted a photo of lizzo and said because lizzo's lizzo's sitting there She's clearly naked, but covering what she needs to cover mm -hmm. so that it doesn't get taken and down. Drinking a cup of something in a mug. Yeah. Um, looking, looking fabulous. Good. Yeah. Her and hair looks amazing. Right? So Gina tweeted out this photo and said, obesity is on the rise, and yet women are told by celebrities and the media that being obese is normal and quote unquote healthy. You never see them try School this. School gun shootings are on the rise, but Republicans just say. Thoughts yeah. and prayers. Yep. <laughs> You never see them try this with men. Only women are insecure enough to fall for it. So, and Candace decided to retweet this. Wait, I'm sorry. Wh women are falling for the fact that big bodies are... Healthy and normal. But men would never be so stupid. Wait, what about... I'm not like... Because it doesn't matter, but like dad bods? Men would never be so stupid. But, okay. So... Gina said what she said so Candace right. <laughs> decided to retweet it and say only women could be emotionally manipulated into supporting their own eradication via su support for trans men only women could be fooled into supporting a death cult of fat acceptance today's culture battles today's cultural battles prove that women are more irrational and emotional than men I'm so <laughs> dumb one your weight really doesn't depict how healthy you are. No. At all. No. D dumb. Yeah. But we're just, we're emotional and irrational. I like how she's like dogging herself yeah, in this statement. I don't understand. <laughs> like, how does she think that she can say these things and them not apply to her as well? Because she's just like, we're here, Rachel and Candace, like through the roof. Does she think she's a white man? She genuinely embodies a Republican conservative Trump supporting white man. I just don't understand it. Like, I, I don't really have comments because like, I'm just so I guess I'm just a woman. So I don't understand. You're just so irrational. I'm and just emotional. so irrational and emotional. I cannot understand no. Candace Owens. No, she's too far above me, I guess. Right. Well, and then some guy tweeted back to her tweet and basically said that the way men the way men get over this or don't fall victim to this is they just say things like, bro, you got fat as F. Like he was like, this is how men talk to each other. And, you know, women are out there supporting each other and saying, if you're fat, you're still beautiful. When 
when men will just call each other out and be like, oh, you got so fat. And Candace responded to this by saying, correct, period. This is how men speak to each other. They do not celebrate one another's failures. Men have to be objectively great at something to earn applause from other men. They strive towards excellence. <clears throat> Women, not so much. We lie. Okay, she said we. We lie. Emotional based lies that are ruining society. She has to be joking. She's this not. has to be the longest con ever. The long. Oh, uh, yes. But it's it, like, but to be like, yeah, we are dumb. We're just and simple I ladies. And I am going to stand on this platform and tell you all how dumb we are. Right. Because I'm so smart. Get back in that kitchen, women. And while I stay on my podcast, I don't oh, right. understand. I don't understand her logic. Yep. Like so. when it's a white man saying this stuff like that women are blah, blah, blah. He thinks he's better than everyone else. He's wrong. But at least he's not being a hypocrite. Right. Well, and like and for her to say that men strive towards excellence, like, yes, obviously there are hardworking men out there like go off both of our fathers and women. Yeah. But like but women don't but strive. women have to work like seven times. Seven was a very random number to choose, but ten no. times harder than to just get equal pay, equal respect to not be called the B word in a workplace like we have to work so freaking hard. We're the ones that have to strive for basic respect and decency in the workplace. But, you know. Emily, <laughs> you're being really emotional about this. Ugh, sorry. I think you need to act like a man. Sorry. And sorry. bottle it up until you punch a hole in the wall. So. I, I think we should just wrap this up and I'll just get in the kitchen where I belong. No, and... but stay on the podcast to let everyone know that oh, you're a dumb woman. How's, how my little pea brain just can't conceptualize this. I don't get it. Yeah. So Lizzo decided to, after she saw all of this, <sighs> Lizzo decided to post a video of herself and said, I just finished showering and doing my little routine. You know what I realized? I'm effing gorgeous. I am the beauty standard ketchup B word. So I, th yeah. yeah, it's, it's very dumb. And then like, and we never talked about like the Ariana thing either that she had to come for it like on the opposite end of the spectrum had to come forward and say something. This was like a few weeks back. I think you sent it to me. Oh, yeah. Where she had to hop on TikTok for the first time and was like, please stop commenting on my weight. Yeah. Because she, like she her body looks different and people were commenting on this because she yeah. po she posted something on Instagram. And so her comments got flooded with people being like, you know, the opposite. They're like, are you OK? Are you healthy? Are you eating? Like, yeah. you seem sick, you know, whatever. And so she had to hop on on TikTok and be like, please stop commenting on everyone's bodies. But it like on mine, like yeah. stop. Like, I am healthy. I am taking care of myself. Like basically saying I I see that you're caring but you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You know? And so it's just like this whole matter of like, no matter what someone looks like on one end or the other, stop commenting on people's bodies. Yeah. Stop asking what they're eating. Stop asking about their health. Yeah. Like people will take care of themselves. If you're like, if you're Ariana's best friend and like you see that she's not eating or like you see. You see that she is not eating. Right. You don't look at her body. You look yes. at her actions. Right. Then you say like, hey, are you doing OK? Is there something I can do to help support you? I'm yeah. here for you if you need me. Not, oh, you look so skinny and sickly. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. It's just it's why and like the Internet and we've talked about this time and time again, like the Internet, the amount of gall that they have that they just yeah. think it's OK to say certain things. Yeah, they do what they do. They do what they do. Um. All right. Shorter news. Yes, please. OK. So Montana has officially become the first state to ban TikTok from its residents. So according to Buzz, <laughs> and it's starting. <laughs> so according to BuzzFeed News, Montana lawmakers passed a bill banning TikTok from operating in the state amid growing concerns of the app's suspected ties to the Chinese government. So the bill was passed in the state house 54 to 43 votes. And now it's up to Governor Greg Gianforte. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong to sign into law. So Montana will become the first state to ban the app outright. So like there's been a couple states where if you have. So if you're traveling through. I think that's fine. But they said if you're a resident. Let me see where it is. So the legislation would take effect on January 1st of 2024. And it prohibits mobile app stores. So Apple Store and Google Play from allowing people to download it. So it'll just be taken off there altogether. And 
if you do still have it downloaded and you're using it by January 1st, 2024, it is a $10,000 violation each day that you continue to have it. How do they habit. know if people are having it? I'm not sure because like that's always been the the whole I don't my brain is fried but that's, that's like the whole thing is like Apple won't share at least Apple products like iPhones yeah. won't share like apps you know like when someone gets arrested data. yeah police will be like we need you to unlock the phone and Apple's like no like it's yeah. in our terms and conditions like this is private property or you know whatever and yeah. they just like won't give away the data so I'm not sure like maybe you could be like reported if someone sees you using it or like if they see that you're posting and they know you're a resident like it seems all like a lot of effort for something that they really don't. They can't monitor. Control. Yeah. yeah. It just seems like a lot of effort. But the fact that this was even passed is, is so scary. dumb. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, <laughs> the amount of apps we have. Oh, right. That are linked back to countries like China. It's just because Trump decided this one. Yeah. And so the Republicans are still going for it. Oh, for sure. And the governor, Greg, I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name again, said that he wants to expand the state's TikTok ban to potentially include other social media platforms. This is communism. It's 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 becoming dictatorship. <laughs> Sorry. Dicta <laughs> dictatorship type of stuff like like him taking this and applying it to other social media platforms. It's literally censorship at its finest. Yeah. That's what this is. That's what this boils down to is they want to censor their citizens. They don't want news getting out as fast. They don't want people being able to come together. They want to be able to regulate. Like, it's censorship and it's scary. So that is. And so the thing is, like, there's already it's called like Lemon 8 or something like that. It's a new TikTok. It's like, oh, like things are already popping up. Oh, yeah. Social like. And the time it takes to ban this, the social medias pop yeah. up and spread faster than you can ban them. Right. And what are you going to do when it's a U.S. based company? Exactly. Like you don't you, have that stuff. You, you don't have that ability to be like, well, it's from China. No. Like, what are you going to say now? Yeah. So, yeah. Which, by the way, I have to like claim my domain names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I I did that before you hired me. I was like, I'm going to Emily Brost off everything. Twitter, TikTok, yeah. you know, whatever. I was like, I don't want anyone stealing it. Um, All of my socials are different. Sorry. <laughs> Ball and Ballinger. Miss our baller one. Miss, Miss our, our baller. baller. Miss our baller. Rachel Ballinger. <laughs> yeah. Nova Qua. Nova Qua. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my God, my potty mouth today. Um, all right. In other news, Nick Cannon recently did an interview with Howard Stern where Howard asked him to. Oh, did he have six more kids or something? No, but Howard asked him to name all of his children and he couldn't. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. Howard... And men strive for excellence. They. He's just, you know. No, you have nothing. I have nothing. <laughs> um, so Howard said to Nick Cannon, of course, you can't name all of your children. And then he attempted and because he has he has 12 now. You can't name 12 children. No, he's really busy. So he, I have nine nieces and nephews. I can rattle that off in two seconds. Well, I honestly, I think it's because he's having the children so close together. He's like <laughs> meshing them. To, I don't know. Whatever. I can't name 12 friends, but that's fine. That's fine. So uh, he attempted to remember all 12 names. So he said, I have Moroccan and Monroe, which we call Rock and Row, Golden, Powerful, and then Zion, Zillion, Zen. And then from there, we have Legendary Love. And then there's Rise. That's when Howard interrupted him and said, wrong, wrong, wrong. You missed a kid. Then Nick added Beautiful Zeppelin and Halo Marie. But he forgot about his ninth child, Onyx Ice, who was literally born in last September. Wait, are these names? Yes. Yeah. I can't tell. When one name ends and, and another same. begins? Honestly, same. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't tell. You're like Onyx Rising Sun Weather Feather. And I'm like, is that one or seven? Not sure. Okay. So <clears throat> we're just, we're going to say he just forgot one. And this one was born, what is it, seven months ago? September? When's September? Seven months ago? When September, September ends. ends. You're welcome. Um, And of course, later in the interview, he said that he believed that we're oh so basically Howard roasted him for for getting a kid and then later in the interview Nick said that he believed that we're here to be fruitful and to multiply and that is the purpose of life is to procreate that sounds very culty culty yep yeah so mm -hmm. what are we doing with all the procreation why is that the purpose of life 
even though we are grossly overpopulated yeah. and we're running out of natural resources and the earth is dying. But tell me why that's the point. To like procreate? Yeah. Why is that the point of life? I mean, technically, from a biological stance, yes, that is our one purpose as a, an animal is to procreate. That is our one drive in life, our one purpose. But we are beyond that. We are beyond animal instincts at this point. Yeah, we're human beings. Right. That can recognize that we're running out of natural resources and the earth is dying. Please stop having 12 right? plus children. Like, yeah. Uh, an insect's point of life, like a bear's right. point of life. But we're human beings. Right. There's too many of us. Well, our, we, our consciousness, like our purpose of life is to just, like love and be happy. To learn things, experience stuff. Right. Like, uh, leave the earth better than we found it. Right. Not make it worse by cro- procreating that much. Dear God. And poor Onyx. Like, can you imagine? Poor Weather Feather. Poor Weather Feather. <laughs> Rain. Raindrop Pop Top. Umbrella. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. You ready for some good news? Yes, please. All right. So a malaria vaccine has just been approved at, for use after eight years of work research. We didn't have a vaccine for this? We had it. What? <laughs> yeah. We had tablets. They're like quanine, quanine tablets that you could take to prevent yourself from getting malaria. So like when I traveled to Africa, I was given these tablets. They make you horrendously sick. Funsies. Yeah. So a lot of people would just choose not to take them because they would give you such like GI problems. So when you are living in a, oh my God, the comments told us, and I already forgot, this is horrible, an underdeveloped country. We're not supposed to say first world, second world, third world. I want to say underdeveloped. Not yet developed country. Yes. When you're living in a disadvantaged country and you already are having issues due to not being able to cook your food properly or like just not having the education to know whether you have the tools or not, how to prepare food where you're not going to have GI problems taking these because a lot of volunteer organizations will pass out these pills to people living in these underprivileged countries and they won't take them because if you're already so sick yeah you're not going to risk being more sick you know Mm -hmm. so they just risk it but this is a vaccine so this is something Uh... kids and babies could get and then you don't have to take those pills and then you're you're locked and loaded for life basically which is amazing because vaccines work work. because science So the R21 malaria vaccine has been approved for use in Ghana and Nigeria, and they will start administering it to infants between five months and three years of age, and which is one of the highest mortality groups for malaria because they're the most susceptible. And scientists have been trying to create a vaccine for malaria for more than a century because, um, and especially for these African countries, because they're home to 95% of all malaria cases and 96% of malaria deaths. And it's children under five account for 80% of those deaths. Why did it take them so long? I don't know. I, okay, this is my conspiracy theory. When it doesn't directly affect the privileged countries, they're not going to put the funding it's not into it. Conspiracy theory. That's just logic. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, I'm sure there's going to be like conspiracy theory. Rich white people do not care about babies that are dying. Yeah, fact. <laughs> because I'm fact. Some scientist is going to comment and be like, actually, it's because we didn't have the technology. I'm going to be like, no. It- we came up with the COVID vaccine in like three days. Right, because it was affecting rich white people. The rich white people. people. We wanted to get back to work. We, I'm in that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's why it took so long is because you have to decide where you want funding to go when companies, especially big pharma drug companies, the scientists that get these, not loans, what are they called? Grants Mm -hmm. to do research and develop things. They are going to get the most money funneled towards things that affect the privileged countries because we want, we want solutions now. So they don't care about kids in Africa that are dying at an 80% rate. No, all they care about is when they do a scandal and they're like, Oh, let's go to Africa and take pictures with a bunch of babies black babies at an orphanage and then put it on my social media and now everyone thinks i'm a good person right but let's not actually help them right so this is incredible this is like has been needed obviously for a very long time this wasn't even the thing yeah yeah so now no more pills we get vaccines oh and they said it has an 80 percent efficacy rate and that it'll be manufactured for only a few dollars per dose so let's hope they keep it there i can't well yeah because it's a not yet developed country, they can't overcharge yes. it. When right. it gets brought to America, it'll be like four thousand dollars a shot. Right. I I can't like we don't need it here, obviously, because like 
we have a couple cases of malaria every year from like Florida, but like we don't really we Florida, get what you doing what you do in Florida, but we get treated and it's fine. Like we have you know a, a healthcare system that that knows how to tackle this. Yeah, but I can't imagine like before I went to Africa, I did have to get like a Hep C shot, a tetanus shot. Like you have to get all the basic like yeah. travel shots, and I I I got the malaria pill, so I. I could see they would charge us if we needed a malaria shot before yes. going there. That they of would. Of course they would. Yeah. God bless America. That's all. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. All right. This story got me. Did I have a tear or two? I don't know. So according to Good News Network, there's a bald eagle named Murphy who, because of a wing injury. Who names. I know. <laughs> That's like bald eagle Murphy. When I told you there was a black widow in the you bathroom, called him Gerald, but you were joking. Yeah, but his name. This is person was for real when they're like Murphy. Murphy. It's probably because they run out of names because they have so many animals coming in and out. They're just like yeah. going down an alphabetical list. They're like, what? Well, I have an uncle named Murphy. Just go for it. Yeah. It's like you know how they name hurricanes and they go in alphabetical order. Yes, it's probably what zoos are doing at this point. Um, so he is at a Missouri sanctuary because of a wing injury. And recently, keepers noticed Murphy feathering a simple nest because the males are in charge of making the nests for their females. And he was paying extremely, he was paying extremely close attention to a single egg that was inside of this nest that he created. But the egg was just a rock that he found. <laughs> um, <laughs> But Murphy obviously didn't know or care. And so he cared day in and day out for that rock. And he was waiting for it to hatch. Like he would turn around and check to see if if the rock was hatched. And he would keep building this nest and making it more comfortable, waiting for it to hatch. And uh, also just so no one gets mad at the sanctuary, they squashed any notions that Murphy was lonely because he does live with four other eagles. That, but they explained that nesting hormones will run their course and that eventually they just figured he'd become bored of the rock and then move on to another pastime. Yeah. But it was nesting season. Um, but Murphy did not move on. So nesting season came and went and he was still looking after his little rock. So on April 1st, when the sanctuary received its first bald, bald eagle nestling, who had broken its wing also when it fell out of a tree when it was born, um, they presented him to Murphy, and it took just a day for Murphy to transfer all of the father, fatherly instincts from the rock to the baby eagle. That's adorable. Mm-hmm. So they noticed in the days after the eaglet arrived, it had a pile of untouched food, but had a full belly, which meant Murphy was eating and then Aww. and then feeding the. That's adorable. Yeah. I love that. That is good news. That's a good short news. Oh, Murphy. Oh, Murphy. You little rock. Idiot. (laughs) Good instincts. Not the smartest. Yeah. Did you see the owl that couldn't have babies but kept trying to nest? And then they put two in there and she was like trying to sit on them. They're like, wow, these are too old to be sat on. (laughs) She doesn't realize that. (laughs) She's trying her best. She's trying to keep them warm. They know how to be warm, but it's okay. They're like literally like, they're like, mom. Wished underneath. (laughs) Please, let us live. All right. Is that all we have for today? Yeah. Which is totally great. Oh, fun fact. Yeah. This was the last thing. Fun fact is the California super bloom this year is so large it was seen from space. I saw it. It wasn't that amazing. No. It was. It was like, whoa. And then you look at the picture like, yeah, there There it is. That's a flower. Orange on a map. Yeah. I went. Like three years ago when there was a super bloom and it was incre- it was literally like once in a lifetime. I will yeah, never. It's cool in person when you're in down person, there. But yeah. from space. But no, I went in person this year. Joy and I took the dogs and it was like patchy and not well, very good. Isn't it because people are traipsing in it? No, it just wasn't what it was like three years ago. Because three years ago, it was like all of the rolling hills were covered in orange. And this year it was like there was a patch. And like everyone was trying to get pictures in this little patch. That's so sad. Yeah. That is so sad. But apparently from space, you can see it. What a depressing story you've just told. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed our show. Please follow, like, and do all the things you're supposed to do. We do have new ATI merch out. It is a singular t-shirt, but it's cute. I hope you like it. Go look in my merch store and get it. Okay, that's the end. <laughs> Love you guys. How do they find your merch store? Link in the, bo- the description down below. Okay. <laughs> Good one. Bye. Bye. 
Thank you for listening to this week's episode of All Things Internet. Please make sure to like and follow our podcast on whichever platform you're currently listening to it on. And make sure to follow us at Podcast ATI on Twitter, where you can ask questions and get the latest updates on our show. We love you. Thanks for listening. I'm Rachel Ballinger, and this has been All Things Internet.